in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed so we have a great destiny every one of us in christ a prophetic destiny regardless the level and the area god would want to use you whether in ministry in business in government in family it does not matter we have a great destiny in christ the bible says those he foreknew he predestined are we together he called he justified and he glorified the end of the journey is your glorification now, let me present to you a roadmap. If you follow the roadmap that I'm about to show you tonight, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture that you will arrive at a triumphant destiny, a destiny that is full of beauty and color, that God will be so greatly glorified in your life and all through your lifetime. If that is you, shout a loud amen. amen. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Very popular scripture, but let's see what God has to teach us about this scripture today. Hmm. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. The B part is my verse of emphasis. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits let's read the b part together from the word but ready one to read but the people that do know their god uh-huh shall be strong and shall do exploits so this promise is for people not animals not birds not inanimate things as we know it says the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Now, in biblical exegesis, please listen carefully, theologically speaking now, when you are drawing forth light from scripture, there are rules that you follow. Number one is that in, in understanding scripture, the first approach is to treat it literally. Are we together? Because more than a prophetic book, or in addition to being a prophetic book, the Bible is... A compendium that contains literature the Bible is an archaeological material the Bible is also a historical material are we together and not everything in the Bible is prophetic at plain sight there are some things that mean exactly what they say so in approaching scripture your first approach should be to try to interpret it directly verbatim as it is written if it does not make scriptural and natural sense then you would need what the Bible calls the presence of two or three witnesses. You would have to bring other scriptures that express the same thought so that you can now look at it contextually and now find out if it will make sense by combining other scriptures and then looking at the verses before or after. If it still does not make the kind of sense you want, then at that point, you will have to buy into the wisdom of the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation. Are we together? To draw out the prophetic meaning. If you were asked to interpret the dream that Pharaoh had, you most likely will fail. Because I am shocked at the interpretation that Joseph gave over that dream. Are we together? That cows, fat cows ate lean cows. How in the world does a cow mean time? How in the world does an ear of corn mean time? 
my first interpretation to that dream will be pharaoh you are under attack this is witchcraft abundance is eating poverty that's going to be my inter i'm being honest with you and yet pharaoh is saying there's nothing witchcraft there this is simply the course of time happening so there are things that when you look at it physically it does not make sense but now when you approach it from a prophetic dimension it will now make sense are we together back to this scripture now you will understand why I said everything I said no 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 not Exodus 40 let's do Daniel 11 again so it says but the people that do know their God now there is a contextual meaning for this you have to read the verses before and after and then you fit it within the context that it was used but because the Bible is also a prophetic book are we together you can still draw forth a very supernatural lesson from it that has nothing to do with the context as discussed I think this is the mistake that most people have sometimes theologians and people who submit themselves to learning scripture when they see that men and women of God draw out prophetic meanings from certain scripture they say it is wrong no you don't have a right to say it is wrong it's a prophetic book it is only that in order of priority there is a contextual meaning are we together and if you focus on the prophetic meaning and lose the contextual meaning then you would not have done justice to that scripture but if you understand the contextual meaning you have the right based on the prophetic character of scripture to derive a prophetic meaning from it are we together i'm teaching you this so that when you are listening to the message of a man of god and you hear him say something else about a scripture whereas based on maybe a higher level of study you see that mm -mm, from a contextual standpoint that person failed but God provided that prophetic meaning will still be able to reveal something about the character of the kingdom the Spirit of God will still honor it only that when you are mentoring people to be of stature and maturity and you are teaching them the word then you will need to be able to teach them to understand from a theological and a contextual standpoint while still holding on to that prophetic meaning so you know that this is actually what the bible was saying however i can still use it to relate to this are we together now now i want to give the interpretation for that verse daniel 11 that really is our key verse of study tonight the bible starts by giving us three keys that represent the major roadmaps and the junctions to our destiny. Number one, the Bible starts with the statement, know their God. Knowledge. Mark the word know. The second word that I want us to pay attention to is the word be. And then, the third word I want us to pay attention to is the word do. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen carefully. But the people that do know shall be and shall do. Are we together? Forget what else they know and what else will happen. The people that do know shall be and do. Now, let me read it for you. Are you ready? Please look up. The only people that do are those who be and those who be are those who know. The only people who can do exploits are those who be strong and the only people who can be strong are the people who know. Let's discuss these three words. The first is the word know. Know talks of knowledge B talks of transformation do talks of action the Bible defines for us the prophetic roadmap to a triumphant destiny that if these three phases of approaching life and destiny is not captured you will never be able to actualize your prophetic destiny knowledge transformation and action but they are not as cheap and empty as they sound. Let's explore by the Spirit. What does it mean and what does it imply to know? 
the Bible immediately tells us that actualizing destiny is knowledge dependent knowledge dependent more than desire dependent you can have desire but until and unless you have the requisite kind and level of knowledge that your destiny demands you may never actualize a great destiny are we together what is the implication of knowing or knowledge number one for you to know anything at all in life especially that which relates to god and your destiny number one you must be meek enough to receive that is the first implication of knowing it is mandatory that for knowing to be a reality in your life you must be meek enough to receive james chapter 1 and verse 21 we're discussing knowing now and the implication james 1 21 it says wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness someone say with meekness one more time please say with meekness with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul that means the realm of knowing is only for people who are meek the moment you do not have the quality of meekness Knowing will never be a possibility with you. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, popular scripture. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. He's saying, listen, I know the value of the word of God. I know the value in this sense of spiritual knowledge. It is able to give you an inheritance to build you up capacity and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified there are many people who cannot arrive at the place of destiny because they do not know and knowing is far from them because there is no meekness at heart is someone learning what else does it mean to know or what does it take to get to the realm of knowing number two for you to be a knowledgeable person you must master the art of asking questions please write it down dr Murdoch would say a question is the seed for an answer that means you are not authorized for an answer until you can ask a question are we together most people do not know in life because they do not know how to ask questions. Questions are very powerful. One day, one of the fathers of faith in this nation was talking to me and he was teaching me the power of questions. And he said, Apostle, always ask questions. Always ask questions always ask questions the next time we spoke he said the same thing again he said always ask questions i wrote it down and i made up my mind do you know those who know how to ask questions never stay in the same position for long are, you, are we listening now but don't assume you know how to ask questions matthew chapter 7 7 and 8 it says ask and you shall receive seven and eight ask and you shall receive and it shall be given unto you that means if it is not given unto you is because you did not ask is that true seek and you shall find it says knock and it shall be opened unto you let's read verse 8 together one to read for everyone that asketh receive it just stop there so the blessing of receiving from asking is for everyone everyone regardless gender regardless race regardless whatever your orientation the moment you are someone who can ask you immediately become a receiver the gift of information the gift of access to knowledge most people do not know how to ask 
James chapter 4 and verse 2, Apostle James was teaching us again and he made a very profound statement. He said, ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. James 4, 2. He says, ye fight and war and ye have not simply because ye ask not. There are many people who are grounded and stagnated in life simply because they have not mastered the art of asking questions. Let me tell you um, my definition of what it means to ask. I'll give you three definitions. Number one, to ask means to request information or to request for an answer by saying or writing. That's the first thing. It means if you want to ask or if you are asking, you are requesting for an information or you are requesting for an answer either by verbalizing it or by writing it. My first definition of asking. The second definition of asking means to invite into or to allow into your space. That means when you ask, you are giving permission for someone or something to come into your space. Powerful. When you ask, it means you are authorizing that information, that realm of reality to come freely into your space. Number three, asking means to inquire the price of or the cost of. If you are asking, it also means you want to know the cost implication of that which you want to have. So there are many people who ask, but all they are doing is just making requests. They have not sat down to count the cost. You're counting the cost. The cost dimension of life is also asking. Is God helping us? This is what it means to know. The people that do know their God, in order to know, you must be meek enough to receive. Number two, you must master the art of asking questions. How, is, how does this happen? How does this happen? The man who came to share the testimony, one of those, those men that came from the East, I was struck by what he said, his honesty to admit. That was the part of the testimony that blessed me. Many of you didn't hear so much, only the amount that the chief would collect and you were clapping. I'm joking. Are we together? But I listened to something that he said. He said, I've been in the faith for a while, but he was honest enough to admit that the things that I had were not producing for me. There was a man who made that kind of confession in the Bible called Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, when he saw what happened to the three Hebrew boys, he was honest and open and said, blessed be the God of Daniel or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are we together now? And he wrote a decree. He was not ashamed to acknowledge. Listen, when your way is not working, stop trying. Provided there are results happening, you must humble yourself. This thing I'm doing, I've been in Abuja for 10 years, 15 years. I don't even have a plot of land now. Don't just credit everything. I, I, I minister deliverance for people, but listen, we are not stupid people. It is not everything that is just demons because there is a dimension of deliverance that is simply a transfer of responsibility. There are many people who don't want to take responsibility over their lives. Adam still missed it in the Garden of Eden. There were no causes. There was no demon. His mother, he didn't even have a mother to say there's anything foundation. There was no foundation from mother and father in the Garden of Eden and yet he still failed. Are we together? You must be willing to ask. My way is not working. I humble myself. I've been doing ministry, but there is no growth. There is no increase. When I teach my people, even when I joke, they don't laugh. They are always angry and frowning at me. 
I think the people are wicked. No, your view of them is that they are wicked. Jesus said, come and learn of me. That means there is something you don't know. He has vetted you and said, come and learn, come and learn. Someone you need to in your mind prophesy to yourself that I need to learn. There are things I do not know. Are we together? What is the implication? What does it take to know? Remember, we're dealing with three words. Have I lost you? What does it take to know? Number three. In order to gain knowledge that translates to your advancement, you must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. When the Bible says the people that do know, it takes a lot to be in the place of knowledge. You must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. Matthew 13, 14. Matthew 13 from verse 44 to 46. Hear what the Bible says. I love Jesus. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Is that in your Bible? It says, the which a man had found, he hideth, and for joy he goeth and selleth all that he has and buy the field. Look at this kind of man. He found treasure and with respect to that treasure, nothing else that he had mattered again. He could sell anything to buy it. Next verse. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. 46. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Apostle, where do I get the money to buy the truth? You get it by selling the inferior truths. Are we together? The money it takes to buy the truth comes by selling what else is not the truth. There is a transaction that happens. Nobody has the capital to buy the truth by default. Get my message. I preached it in um, Takorad in Ghana. Buy the truth. You can get it on Koinonia Global. Please listen to it very carefully. I teach there that there are five currencies that we use to buy the truth. Currency number one is meekness. Meekness and humility is the first currency we use to buy the truth. Are we together? The second currency we use to buy the truth with is honor. Another currency we use to buy the truth is hunger. When you do not have the currency of hunger, you cannot buy the truth. Are we learning? The Bible tells us that a man found goodly pearls and he sold everything to have more capital and he now bought what he considered his treasure. Let me tell you this, please look up. Most people are not in the place of knowledge because they are unwilling to sacrifice their time. They are unwilling to sacrifice energy and to sacrifice their resources. With all due respect to everyone here, I am amazed and humbled at the amount of international guests that come in every week from around the world. You would think it's a conference that is happening all the time. There are people who would travel as far as Australia, US, to come to Koinonia for a normal service. We're not even talking about, of course, every service is supernatural, but not a dedicated service to minister to people. And some of these people, you will be surprised. They would come down to Abuja, and some of them will still travel to follow some of the ministrations within the time. And you are wondering, couldn't they just sit down and follow online? There's something they are looking for. Are we together? And yet there are people who don't even stay. They stay a two, three minutes distance. They just look through their window and once they see someone falling, they say, wow, ah, man is powerful. Oh. And then they go back. And I'm, I'm not being sarcastic, please. But you look at the life of that person, there is nothing that, that has beauty and color. Can I tell you the truth? A hospital does not go around looking for patients. 
if you are sick you are the, no matter how sick you are even if you cannot walk you must find somebody who picks you to the hospital a hospital just keeps being equipped but it will never go around i don't know any hospital that lifts from the foundation going around to every home we live in a generation where we want truth and knowledge at our terms mm -mm. is the thinking of mediocres when you truly desire knowledge you seek and you pursue it with everything within you hallelujah very very powerful you must be willing to sacrifice your time your resources to buy it proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1 proverbs chapter 2 please my son if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee uh-huh so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding three it says yea if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding reading to six verse four if thou seekest her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God for the Lord giveth wisdom but he doesn't give everybody he gives those who seek passionately and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding to who to the one who is seeking a silver you are my strength when I am weak you are the treasure that I seek. You are my only no. I'm seeking you as a precious jewel. Not to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my only no. Can I tell you? Respectfully speaking, there are people who are not passionate about anything. There is nothing in their lives that can keep them awake in the night. There is nothing in their life that can make them forget food. There is nothing in their life that can make time pass without them being... You will not be great that way. There has to be something in your life that keeps you awake. Jesus said, my meat, my satisfaction comes from doing and finishing the will of him that has sent me are we together there are many people who are very passive if you are passing and you see something on TV you just watch oh wow I just learned something now but they never pursue knowledge the people that do know are the people that seek with meekness the people that do know are the people who are willing to ask questions and never stop till they find answers the people that do know are the people who are willing to sacrifice their time their energy and their resources to buy the truth number four the people that do know are there are the people who have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge that is the fourth price it takes to be in the realm of those who know. You must have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge. Value and retain superior knowledge. There are many, many people who even by the mercies of God, they encounter valuable knowledge, but they have not mastered the art of placing value on and retaining knowledge that is useful. The same Matthew 13. Let's look at 47 and 48. Matthew 13, 47 and 48. Please look up. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind. Everybody say every kind. Usually, this is truly the product of passion. When you pursue knowledge with passion, you will gather every kind useful knowledge useless knowledge knowledge that is structured knowledge that is scattered your assignment is in verse 48 which when it was full they drew to shore 
and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels and cast the bad away. Are we Bible students? Sometimes you will not have the luxury of having refined knowledge. This is where the gift of pastors who are according to the heart of God comes in. Are we together now? This is why you must value what you are receiving here and any other place when you find a man of God who has walked with the Spirit through pain, through tears, through study and experience to filter out. This is what we do before we come to church. Matthew 13, 48. You, you cannot believe the amount of research and study and prayer and deep thought and contemplation that comes into bringing one message. What you receive is the filtered, finished version. But I'm telling you, classically speaking, if you want knowledge and you pursue knowledge, please go to verse 47. Don't forget it. You are going to gather, media helpers 47, you are going to gather every kind. There are times where I'm researching maybe on the Holy Spirit and then I'm studying and my goodness, you will see some videos with some kind of demonic occultic information. It's part of the price of seeking. If you seek, you will find. Are we together? Some of you want to study about finances and you will meet all kinds of nonsense that you, it is don't be don't be angry in the midst of all that rubbish ask those who mine have you seen people who mine gold it's not pure refined gold that just comes and you put it in your pocket and go and sell it no there is nothing you mine from the earth that comes pure when you mine it from the earth you now sit down 48 when you sit down then you gather. Do you know it takes time and sacrifice? Okay, this one I found now. Let me read this article they wrote on the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit is a woman with this nonsense and you throw it away and you don't feel bad. Sometimes you spend the whole day buying a book and midway you have to read half of the book to know it is wrong. Are we together? The cover is excellent. It starts with a powerful scripture. It's halfway. The Holy Ghost will say, no, stay. Holy Spirit, you would have just told me from the bookshop that this thing is going to waste my time. Truly, we live in a generation that does not respect knowledge. The sacrifice of knowledge. Are we together? So, you must be willing to value knowledge. Proverbs chapter 4. Let me show you something. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Proverbs 4, 20. My son, we're reading from verse 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Uh -huh. Let them not depart from your eyes. So they can depart from your eyes. And keep them in the midst of your heart. 22. They are life to those who find them. Not those who want them. Not those who want them, those who find them and health to their flesh. Can I tell you the truth? When people do not pay the price to retain knowledge, this is why this generation has no excuse to fail because technology has made retention possible. Are we together? There was a time where if a man says something and quotes a scripture, that is the scripture tied to your next level. If you didn't hear it, sorry for you. You have to either buy the tape or come next year for that conference. But now you can go back. You know you are a student of knowledge when a 15 minutes message takes three hours to finish. Because for every one or two minutes you are stopping. Has that happened to you? A message of one hour. You hold on with your laptop or iPad. You come back later and on again. The fire was too much. You calm down. You are not in a rush. God, what are you saying? And light will come out of that knowledge. Revelation, I've told you, is not just knowledge. Knowledge is important, but revelation is understanding mixed with knowledge. Are we learning? The people that do know, a quick recap, are the people that number one, 
must be meek enough to receive. That's what it takes to know. The people that do know are number two, the people who master the art of asking questions and don't stop. The people that do know, number three, are people who are willing to sacrifice their time, their energy, their resources to buy the truth. Number four, the people who know are the people who place value on knowledge and have sustained the ability to retain superior knowledge. Hallelujah. I can tell you, retaining knowledge is not the issue of being dull or intelligent. It's the issue of being serious with your destiny. Mm. There are people who cannot tell you last week's message. They don't even remember, honestly. Frankly speaking, sometimes your mind can play games you can forget, but they can't even remember any point. No, ought not to be so. The people who know. That means if you want an excelling destiny, please listen carefully, whether in ministry, whether in whatever it is. It was Bishop Oyedeko who taught us that when they were about to build Covenant University, he said he researched a number of world-renowned universities. There were other universities already, but he, he paid the price to study them, put up a panel that understudied it. Are we together? And then at the end of it, he came to a conclusion that Covenant University, he wanted it to become the new generation Harvard. Now there's landmark and they are all making tremendous contributions. Are we together? Many years ago, I was in Afeba Balolo University to preach. And my goodness, when I got to hear about the standard and some of the things happening there, and that that man was then at that time, I think he was in his 80s now, I don't know, or maybe 80s, I don't know how old he is now. And his passion, he would still come to the office and sit down and coordinate all kinds of things. I had to tell myself, anybody that says it's too much, think again. Some of us are already young, 25, and they tell you, ah, you are tired, you have tried. Nothing, you are not impacting anything. You have not utilized even 10% of the, the, the mental potential that the Spirit of God gave you. Please challenge yourself in the name of Jesus that you will go for structured knowledge and don't stop. A young man who is sleeping 12 hours, you are in the first level of your life. You will wake up towards the last level of your life. When other people are sleeping, trouble will keep you awake. It's not a cause. It's because you have not prepared your way before the Lord. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. Most of the time people used to live a fake life would have been used in getting knowledge that produces what is genuine. Are we together? The time it takes to hide around cars and snap and say it's your car. The time it takes to sit down in an office and say you were in London. All that time is the same time you can settle down and, and study in your one room. Even with a candle, shabalakatos. Lord, I know that in the name of Jesus, things will not remain like this. And the spirit of grace is honoring your sincerity and your investment. But the people that do know. Dearly beloved. I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos kete branda kata pa kotos koto prekete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.